Fellow nerds, we are talking Invincible, season two, episode six. <laughs> six, yes. It's not Four that episodes. simple. I personally thought this was a tremendous episode. This episode, it it helped me with the last episode. You know how I only, I think I rated the last episode of 6.5. Um, this one, it helped me with the last one. And especially with what what was her name? The girl that shrinks, um, shrinking ray. Shrinking ray. When she came out of the body, I, I don't know if I'm jumping out to the end here. I'm sorry. No, not at all. <laughs> that, that wasn't at the end, but um, you know that was that was good for me. I like that <laughs> that she didn't bite it so easily, and um, the the leader of the, the serpent explode. Um, King huh? Cobra. King Cobra. Oh yeah. Now, when he, you know, wait, I is he King Cobra? Yeah, yeah. This is the Lizard League. He, this is, uh, he's like the Lizard Prime. King or Lizard. King, sorry. Yeah, King there Cobra you go. is in Marvel. God, yeah. So <laughs> to remember this stuff. When he, you know, I thought he was, I thought he was in charge at the end of the last episode. And then when he gets up and just takes him out, you know, just, 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 that was pretty sweet for me. I, I like that. I just gotta. If they had packaged these two together, I, I think it would have been better for me to watch these two right back to back. I agree. I think it would have made a lot more sense to have these two uh, released at the same time. You know, and seeing Rex explode, kind of deal with what I mean, taking a bullet through the brain, and mm-hmm. then being able to like fight through it and stuff. That was I was watching that like. Dang, and of course the soldiers come in they're like, are you all right? Why wouldn't I be all right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you what, these last two episodes have improved how I feel about that character. Um, he, Oh, gosh, he's just been the worst character on Invincible since we, we started. Like, I... I, I go back and forth between I'm it's smart. like, who do I dislike more, Omni Man or Rexplode? And it's like, oh yeah. God, he's just so insufferable. But these two episodes, I'm just like, okay, all right, you know what? I can tolerate you a little bit more because you you really uh you really showed your heroic side, which is not yeah, something um you know I've seen a lot of out of him that as much. But putting him in more of a leadership role kind of forces his hand, I think. And he's still himself, though, because it was great when Mark went in to talk to him and he was like, I feel so terrible about the way I treated all these people. You know, I really I don't know why I did it. I'm terrible. And he's like, oh, I don't care. He's like, what do you want to talk about? Oh, I can see it on your face. Right. I was like, "Okay, good. He hasn't completely changed. You know, he's not right. He may have regrets, but he's still the same person. Mm hmm. But even, you know, they dealt with a lot of Mr. Immortals, or just the Immortal, not Mr. Immortal, that's Marvel again. They they keep tricking me, Invincible, but the Immortal, you know, dealing with Duplicate's death, and he's like, why Mm -hmm. have I never felt like this before? You know, I've had thousands of mates die or whatever, and, you know, it's never affected me, and, you know, dealing with that, and you see, you know, Rexplode dealing with you know, his injury and how he's treated people and Mark, you know, realizing that I really can't date Amber. It's not fair to her. And, you know, basically him talking to the clothing guy, I can't remember his name, and Amber talking to Eve on the thing and them kind of going through the same thing and coming to the same realization. I was like... I believe the clothing guy that you're thinking of is Luke Skywalker. Yes. (laughs) That is definitely Mark Hamill's voice. Yes. (laughs) But I was like, man, for a, I mean, we got some action. Don't get me wrong. We saw, you know, some fighting against the, uh, the Staros, and you know, we saw the mm-hmm. Rex explode, finishing off King Lizard. But it was very just sort of emotional. You know, characters dealing with these emotions that they're going through from all the things that are going on, and I was like, yeah, damn, they really did a great job on this episode. I like it. It ended, and I was like, oh man. Why do you got to keep I doing was that to me? worried. I was really worried about this episode going in because having read the comics before, the way this played out in the comics, after they had uh, saved the Martians from the uh, the Starro knockoffs, uh, same same basic thing kind of played out where they they were like, uh, 
okay, so, you know, what happens next? Uh, okay, well, we want to honor you as heroes. However, you know, he has to stand trial. Oh, okay, well, what's going to happen after that? Well, we're going to execute him. And so in the comics at this point, Mark was slowly becoming more and more like Omni-Man. And in the comics, he kind of genocided all of the Martians. And then nobody brought it up again. It was like, it was the big nothing burger. They went back to Earth, um, didn't even mention it. Everyone's just like, hey, good job, Mark. You really killed an entire planet's worth of uh, of characters in space. So I am happy that they didn't go that route in this. Now, he was close, but you could see that he was a lot, that they illustrated it more carefully. They animated it more carefully to the point where he was like, he crashed through a ship and gently grab somebody kind of okay well you're wearing a spacesuit you're fine you can float here he didn't like actively go out and destroy and blow up the entire mothership which thank you <laughs> that wouldn't have made Not much sense had they did mark that, a yes. maniac yes he's got heart he's got heart his dad doesn't have heart well his dad's getting a heart it's more yeah. like his dad is becoming him more like instead of him becoming his dad but I always thought that was it was such a weird moment in the comics and I'm and so when this episode is coming up I was like Please don't do it the same way. Please change that. Because I've noticed that they've been tweaking certain aspects, and I am happy for it. Now, now that's a... Go ahead. I was just going to say, did uh, Mark's mom name the baby Oliver in the comics? No, he was named Oliver before. I don't think she named him that. I thought she, she named, named him in this Oliver episode. Close no, in the episode, she did. But in the comics, I don't believe she did. I think he oh, was named he was already... Oliver Pryor. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah. Because I thought that was kind of sweet, too, where he's like, Mama, Mama. And she's like, oh, I'm not your mama. <laughs> well, but... That was the other thing that they changed. He was already talking by the time Mark dropped him off. Oh, too. okay. Yeah, he was, he was walking, talking. He was essentially already a, uh, a toddler when uh, Mark left him with his mom. I was like, all right, hey, Mom, uh, got to go back to space. Deuces. <laughs> now I'm wondering about Oliver's lifespan. Since uh, it's only two years on that planet, and Omni Man is obviously like much longer, pretty immortal. So um, the way that Omni Man explained it to Mark before, um, because uh, when when him and Mark were fighting at the end of season one, he said, uh, you know, you don't understand how powerful the um, uh, oh my god, what are they called? Viltrumites. Viltrumite. You don't understand how powerful the Viltrumite genes are. You are going to live um, possibly as long as me. He says they basically cancel out your humanity. So then that, that child will also live. In Probably. Morning. Yeah, it's very likely. Yes. <laughs> I really enjoyed Omni-Man's books, too. Yeah. I can't <laughs> see why they didn't sell like hotcakes. <laughs> Again, another change from the comics. They did sell like hotcakes in the comics. He was a, a well-renowned author. Oh, but he didn't write them in order to sell them here. He wrote no. them for Clue. Yes, yes. I like that device too that um, Alan yes. had that scanned all those books. He didn't even have to open them, <laughs> and he grabbed all the information. Mm -hmm. I gotta say, Alan's one of my favorite characters. He is a good character, yeah. Well, especially he's probably going to take a prominent role. Probably not in the end of this season. Because I think it was pretty clear by Mark saying, you know, tell them I can't come there and help them now, but when they're ready to take on the Viltrumites, call me and I will be there. Because I do think we're going to get back into the angstrom plot here relatively soon. But based on that ending, yeah. <laughs> it was really cool that, hey, I figured out my dad left us clues and here's information mm -hmm. for you guys. He understood all the Viltrumites' weaknesses and he spelled them out here for everybody. So it'll be nice if they kind of we continue to see Alan, even though it's a different plot thread, see what he's mm -hmm. going through with the council and getting all that stuff ready and maybe building up, you know, an army or things to help stop the Viltrumites. And if his dad ends up on their side, that's a formidable pull for the Viltrumites. I keep thinking at times that they keep showing him in prison and, you know, him like being 
sort of uh, just when he's interrogated, just he won't answer. They just throw him on the floor. And I always go back and forth because you see him at the end just kind of pound the floor and kind of dent it in a little bit. And I'm like, okay, is Mark going to go rescue his dad at some point? Is he going to work? Definitely not this season. But is he going to work with maybe the council knowing that they can probably get Omni-Man on their side? Are they going to try to free him? Or is he going to free himself and reach out to probably Mark to be like, you know, you're going to need my help. And then they, he can be like, hey, guess what? There's a whole group of people that read your books. He'll be like, oh, did they like him? And then, you know, we know how to take him down. I keep wondering how they're going to go with that because having not read the comics, I don't know where it's going. But it, I... I don't know if they're going to follow the comics. Uh, again, they, I know they've been making minor tweaks and they're rearranging certain story threads. So I don't know what they'll change and what they won't. Um, but I I also don't want to tell you what happens because I don't want to spoil yeah, it. Yeah, don't. You. I don't want to know. Are they following it, though? They're not really following the comics. They, got they kind of are. <laughs> they are. They're just rearranging a lot of the stories. Like I said, like the whole thing with um, uh, the... Uh, what do you call it? The guy who made the um, the zombie uh, robots. Um, around the same time that uh, all this stuff is happening with the Martians, that was happening in the comics. Like again, they kind of they're moving things and putting story threads in different spots. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see where they go because I do think it's going to be you know, at the most probably six seasons. And they're going to wrap it off with a comic. You know, there's 300 mm -hmm. comics. So I'm just kind of curious. Of threads to tie up. I mean, we got a lot of thread. We got a bunch of threads that were introduced <laughs> at the end of this episode. You mm -hmm. know, we got uh, the, uh, what was the astronaut? Russ was the astronaut. You know, we saw him at his home cleaning up. And then the Sequid or Starro Jr. kind of gets back yep. in his head. We saw Nolan imprisoned by the Viltrumites mm -hmm. and kind of being interrogated and kind of being thrown back in a cell. And then we saw Angstrom. I think he returned to his Earth, if I'm not mistaken, because he said he had somewhere to go. Yeah, he went through like four or five portals there. Yeah. The and I thought yeah, that was to his original Earth, and I'm not sure. So he, he did say it's good to be home, so yeah, I think Oh, so. that's right. Yeah. I knew there was a reason I thought he went to his original Earth. It's because he mm -hmm. said it. <laughs> I hope that we get a little more of him, though. I hope so, too. Been, it's been like he's just been an after credit scene or end credit scene, you know, at, and right before the show end type of thing. I'd like to see him a little bit more in depth. And we only got two episodes left for the second season. So, yeah. it, you know, I don't see his storyline playing out not, well, and finishing. So we might get a a cliffhanger at the end of this with him. Or maybe we just see little clips of him and he's going to come in in the third season and kind of, that's when that, that that's when that heck is all going to break out. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I assume Keith was reading the chat. Uh, he's on mute, so I don't know, um, something happened over there. Oh, oh, okay. But yeah, I read the chat too, and we really can't bounce back to that without. Uh, we can go to tangent time for a minute and discuss that for a sec. It's up to you if you want. Yep, Keith's walking away. He's had enough. Yeah. Well, we did have to pay the bills. I'd like Keith to be involved in that conversation, though. All right. Well, as far as uh, Invincible goes, um, you know, getting back on that topic, um, there are there, there is one thing that I hope that they don't change. And again, I know they're making minor tweaks here and there, but I mentioned this when we were doing our trailer breakdown that I couldn't wait to see because obviously when you're reading a comic, you have to make up the voices in your head. You can't really hear what they sound like. So the um, the leader of the Viltrumites. I kid you not, and I think I shared this picture with you all. He looks identical to Freddie Mercury. And oh, I never found story. any absolute like conclusion. Did uh did he do that on purpose? There was nothing that ever said, 
yes, I purposely made him look like Freddie Mercury. He never said one way or the other. Um, but I mean, he's like a dead ringer. So I always, whenever I was reading the comics, I like, I heard it in his voice. I would read it as like, like, um, as this like posh British dude. <laughs> just like. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just, I'm curious. I know that they're probably not going to do that, but I know I wasn't the only one who noticed how identical he looked because I did find like entire Reddit threads talking about it. So I know, again, I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> Starts off with mama just killed a man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or another one bites the dust. Something like that. Oh, God, sing that before they're ready to execute to Nolan. <laughs> right. <laughs> Them Vulture mites, they got a sense of humor, man. Mm -hmm. oh, they do not. Oh, God. It could, it could be like uh, um, that movie, The Other Guys with Will Ferrell and uh, uh, Michael Keaton, where Michael Keaton was like quoting. Uh, um, what was it? Uh, TLC songs, I think, or something. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go chasing waterfalls. Right. He's just like, uh, hey, guys, look, uh, I understand. You're going to go out there and uh, you're going to do your cop stuff, but uh, hey, don't go chasing waterfalls. Okay, you <laughs> do know that that's a TLC song, right? Now, I don't know what you're talking about. I've never heard of them. I've never heard of that group. <laughs> but, uh, you know, getting real tired of your uh, your shenanigans and I don't want no scrubs. <laughs> it's funny about Ryan Gosling to go tangent for a second. He's in all these action movies, but he's never been as in a superhero movie that that I know of. Who? Ryan Gosling. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, uh, yes. I can't think of one that he's been in. Yeah. Is he tagged to be in an MCU movie? Um, I remember Keith mentioning it during our rumor mill rundown, and I think he said that uh, he thought Ryan Gosling was supposed to be in a role. I let me see, let me look at uh, his notes again. Look at the rumor mill in there. Um, where was it? Uh, da, 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 da. according to the rumor, okay, Nathaniel Essex. Uh -huh. Oh, Geek Ledger did Essex. mention. Uh, he hasn't read the Ryan Gosling. Here we go. Nova is in early development of Marvel Studios, so that is good news. With the rumor that Ryan Gosling signed up for a role, could he be our Richard Rider? And then Ghost Rider is also on the way. Could this be Ryan Gosling's role? So Keith right. thinks that it is either Ghost Rider or Nova. Gotcha. Yeah, you, you figure all the all the action heroes are eventually gonna end up with a superhero role. Yeah. Only makes sense. Mm -hmm. I was saying that uh, Geek Ledger actually said, I haven't read the Invincible comics, but I've heard about the whole Mark and Anissa storyline. And they need to either cut that storyline or do a lot better. Than oh, they did the yeah. Comics. That was uh, that was rough with a capital R. Okay. Should we? I, I only have a few minutes that I do have to go. Uh, you guys want to rate this episode real quick? Yeah. Yeah, I think we should do that. And to me, I'd be rating it as a part two of the last episode because it really <laughs> cleared up the last episode for me. And I think I rated the last episode, what did I say, 7.5 or 7? I think so. And I'm going to stay in that same area. I'm going to go with a 7.5 on this one, too. It really helped me with the last episode. And okay. I wish they would have released them together, to tell you the truth. So... Just for the reasons we've described and in, in the interest of saving time, I think, it, just like I said, I think they should have put them out together. It would have made more sense to me. Yeah. Who's next? I'll go. You know, I thought this was a really well-written episode. It really, you know, for an animated show, really hit a lot of emotions with the different characters. A lot of characters grew in ways. And, you know, for took him down new paths, you know, with Mark's storyline with Amber, you know, Rex Blode, the Immortal, all this stuff is kind of going and people are dealing with, you know, personal issues while, you know, they're fighting aliens mm -hmm. and, you know, all of this crazy stuff. And I just thought it was a really well done episode. I'm going to give it an 8.5. I thought they did a tremendous job of weaving a bunch of things together and making it seem seamless. I, I really enjoyed this episode. I also really enjoyed this episode. I thought it was phenomenal. Um, thought that thought it did a good job of uh, again uh, carrying on like what Keith was saying. Thought it did a good job of um, you know really making us feel out these characters. 
uh, really well. That's one thing that I appreciate that they can do in some of these ser series is it doesn't always have to be uh, just punching and blood and guts and everything like that. And I do like that Rexplode got his moment to say, uh, um, I'm basically, and then we get the title card, Invincible. That's right. <laughs> so that I, I love that. <laughs> um, it was just an all-around good episode, and like Dave said, I think it works as a perfect continuation. The previous episode, I kind of do also wish they had just dropped them both together. Um, but uh, the other thing that I'm giving high praise for is the fact that they switched up some of the things that I think were bad in the comics that I thought... I'm glad that they changed, because they don't it didn't make sense. And again, it wasn't even like brought up in the comics. It was like just this weird thing that they did and it just felt out of place. So I'm glad that they are making some of the changes that they have made. I think it has improved it so far. So, um, yeah, I am willing to give this a, uh, I'm going to give it an eight. I'm going to give it an eight. I think it was a good episode. Excellent. Anyone out sure. in the chat, if you saw it, let us know what your ratings are. We are going to get ready to raid somebody. Hey fellow nerds, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you want to see more of this stuff, make sure that you check out our Twitch stream. We try to do these live Sunday or Monday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Keep an eye on our social media to find out when you can join in live and chat with us during these live streams. Also, as usual, don't forget to check out our other social media. Add us at Twitter, comment down below, and we'll see you next time right here on Not Your Status Quo.